Welcome back to the Beer Brackets Pub, everybody. Today we're continuing on with our series of reviews on Hofbrau that's been spreading, man, over about what two years right now? Maybe maybe two yeah. and a half. I think probably <laughs> yeah. throughout the lifetime of the channel, we've been touching on the Hofbrau beers, but now we're kind of like almost completing the set. I think, right? Is there any big Hofbrau beer that's still left after this one? Uh, I know for sure there's the the winter one uh, yes i think right. there might be some others but the three with the one that we're reviewing today those are the most uh, right commonly found around definitely i know they have a mybach as well but i mean like yes that's true with all due respect to the mybach i would love to try it one day i think this probably closes out the series of the most common hofbrau beers i would say so this as you see in front of us is the hefeweizen <laughs> and watch our reviews of their original. So today we have the luxury, buddy, as we say all the time, of just being able to jump right into the beer. But there are some interesting factoids, man, to say about the Hefeweizen here. I've got one, at least one interesting beer legend <laughs> to let you know. Is there anything that you want to interject here? The only thing that I was thinking about mentioning that makes this yeah. a little special, but I don't know if it's, it's something that you're going to talk about. It's okay. We can cross just, the beer wires. That's totally fine. Let's 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 cross the streams here. Let's <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> One of the oldest, if not the oldest, Weissen uh, beer brewed, correct? Uh, for, That's right. For what I uh, at least according according to, uh, according to the legend. website and beer legends, exactly, yes. exactly. <laughs> One of the original, if not the oldest, Hefeweizen style. So we're going really to the root there. Off, uh, but I, I want to hear now, my friend. Tell me, tell me about what other facts and legends well, you have heard. The Hefeweizen, the Hofbrau Hefeweizen, is the oldest wheat beer in Bavaria, specifically in Bavaria, not in Germany, in Bavaria. Mm. But secondly, and this is super interesting, there was a 200 year period where the Hofbrau Hefeweizen was the only wheat beer that was allowed to be brewed in Germany that long like that's insane that's a that's a very think about it, that's a really long time so back then the ability to brew wheat beer was done on and i, I don't know how to pronounce this word ducal ducal decree but by the decree of a duke so you had to be given the power to brew <laughs> wheat beer by a duke and so he was just all tied up in hofbrau and wanted to give them the exclusive rights to brew it. and that lasted 200 years it's pretty interesting, man. A, the beer wars, is. the ancient beer wars. <laughs> <laughs> They've been around forever, and there's reasons for that. We might not fully understand, but we for sure try to capture here on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> That's super interesting. So an extremely, extremely historic brew from an extremely historic brewery. And I think we need to get right into this. I'm so curious. I've never tried this one before. Have you? I have not, my friend. Mm -hmm. I have not. I've tried the other two, but I have not tried this one. So look at that. Dude, this is epic. This is epic. Anytime we have a beer, <laughs> especially a super historic beer from the brewery like Hofbrau that we've never tried before, beer fireworks, buddy. And I must say, we, we both have uh, bottles because normally right? you always have cans. Like on this right? one here, I guess like, uh, we have the same import. <laughs> That's right, man. That Yeah, that never happens. But do you have the small bottles? Uh, yes, I have the small bottle. I've got the 500 uh, milliliter, half a liter. Ah, here. you got the good one there, man. Like I looked yeah. to see if I could find this one here, but that was the only option. <laughs> I've got the case. adult size Beth of Bison right here. I have the baby version. Is yours exploding with carbonation? Yes, it is. It has uh, qu quite a bit, as you can see here. So is this bottle conditioned? I don't know if it's bottle condition, but it definitely has for sure yeast in like any Hefeweizen. That's where the Hefe comes from. Right, uh, so it, exactly. It definitely has okay. the, I don't know if it's bottle conditioned. It doesn't, uh, that yeah, it doesn't I, say I'm, that it is. It, it, it doesn't necessarily say. But all the Hefeweizens are always going to have like beer, uh, sorry, beer, <laughs> beer sediment, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeast sediment. <laughs> all the Hefeweizens are going to have beer in them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, actually, when we do the bottle refresher, mm. we got to capture some of that uh, yeast there. So, like, first impressions, we don't have a category for visuals, but it looks like 
it does not look like a standard wheat beer, right? Like it looks almost more like a lager. Look at that. It's very clear. Very, very, very clear. Very clear. Almost more like an Erdinger, which is bottle conditioned. Wow. Uh, it's very clean. Like it's clean, yeah. but, but, but interesting. It has a very strong, and I could almost smell it immediately when I opened the bottle. Yeah. It has a very strong clove note surrounded by this um, light, very subtle banana. And a lot of times, yeah. you know, it, the banana turns more into bubble gum. In this case, no, it's it's really just like banana. And, and, and it, right. that clove note is very intense. Like it's probably the predominant one. And malts, like very, very nice biscuity right. layers yeah. of malt. Uh, it's it's extremely inviting. It's a three on three man like for me. I, I can't wait to get into the glass. I was thinking about, as I was starting to smell this, I was thinking about like a 2.5 maybe, but I think I'm gonna have to agree with you and go with a three on this too, because there is like that really faint banana. There's a banana in the distance, buddy. Yes. Just like- The banana in the distance, like the chocolate. in the distance. <laughs> Almost like, you know, you're on a Mario Kart track and you see like Luigi has dropped a banana <laughs> ahead of you on Rainbow Road, you know, and you like, you see it up there. And that's it's coming. It, that's it, man. It's coming at you, just that banana in the distance. You say the biscuitiness, that's the thing that just sold me right away. Like there's this nice toasty biscuitiness on this aroma that's um, making me salivate. I want to go in for this beer. It's, yeah. a, it's a three on three aroma, buddy, going in. So this this beer is showing mucho promiso right away mm -hmm. coming into this review. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let's man. taste this. Cheers. Off brow Hefeweizen for the first time. Oh. Mm. Okay. Sorry. Interesting. <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting that. That's quite nice. Quite nice. Um, yeah. Surprising, I would say. I I don't know if if you you had the same experience, but it, it almost started similar to another beer bracket favorite beer, like the Paulaner. Uh, yes. That we 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 the Paulaner have advised. It has that initial burst of like banana clove, like that is very strong. That dissipates really quickly, and then translates into that biscuity, rich, toasted character of the malt. Yeah, it's quite a complex taste that the, this beer has. I That's think I'm going to go with the 2.5. There's almost like all of those flavors are there, but they're a little yeah. toned down just a little bit. So, so, so perfectly done. Uh, volume has been, <laughs> you know, moved it's been down, down to, yeah, it's turned, turned down, down a little bit. For yeah. a second category in a row, I'm going to match you on your score. I'm, I'm going to agree with your 2.5. I think you described it perfectly. I'd have a hard time sort of adding to that, but there's so much going on. It's so complex. Mm. Everything you mentioned on the aroma, you know, the banana, clove, that biscuitiness, it's all there. Just, I would, like, it, those notes are like a 7 on 10. <laughs> I would love for them to be a 9 on 10. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, just give me more. Give me more of that. Yeah. It makes it really drinkable for a Hefeweizen. Like, very, almost like, very this drinkable. drinks like a lager. <laughs> which is, It does. I've never had a Hefeweizen exactly like this before. Now, buddy, beer brackets tradition. I love this. This is the best part. We're <laughs> refresh our mouth fuels. Let's get this going. Let's pour out the rest of these <laughs> wonderful beers. We've got to copyright that, my friend. The, the, the refresher. Yeah, the refresher. Exactly. But I got to say, man, these like these sessions in the pub with you, just filming these reviews. So grateful for these. Every, every one that we get to do. Oh, it's just too, such a good time. <laughs> such a fantastic experience getting to taste these delicious beers from around the world. You know, it's not, it's not taken for granted. And, and I appreciate you saying that, my friend. Likewise, likewise. This is a fantastic thing that we have here. So, yeah. Cheers to yeah. that. What do you think of the mouthfeel? Mm. Mm. It has a very lively carbonation. Very. Uh, but I would say that this one here definitely resembles more, leaning more towards the lager. It, it's definitely way right. more carbonated yeah. than a lager. Yeah. It, it's more pillowy, it's fluffier, but but there's something about the mouthfeel that reminds me more of a lager. So it's like almost yeah. like a lager that has all these beautiful Hefeweizen uh, aroma to it with that extra carbonation. Right. There's no oiliness, no stickiness. It's very clear and clean. But I think I'm going to go actually with the two, my friend, because, mm. you know, I can see already, like, just by looking at your glass, you have a little bit more carbonation than I do. It, it's almost lacking a little bit of that pillowiness uh, that, that I would Yeah, expect. that you would expect from a Hefeweizen mm -hmm. or a wheat beer in general. You exactly. Know, 
I agree with you 100. percent I, I, you're nailing it, man. I know you're you're going before me, and I know this doesn't always <laughs> happen where in these episodes where we agree in the scores. Of course, we very often have very different scores, but this one it seems like you're going first as as usual, and I'm just agreeing with everything you say. And I think you're you're hitting the nail on the head. And I think we're as beer barometers, we're interpreting this beer the exact same way. It's very much drinks like a lager. I would because it's a wheat beer. I would like for there to be either like a bit more of um. A, like a velvety body to it maybe yes. maybe a bit more head on it like either a sharper carbonation or if it doesn't go the sharp carbonation route like an erdinger does with the bottle fermentation the other way around where it's more creamy more velvety it just has like this in-between lager mouthfeel that's kind of just it doesn't yeah. serve the beer super well i think it doesn't have what you're looking for from a wheat beer let's give it that right in terms of a body still it makes it very drinkable it's like you could drink this Extremely. like a lager. Like yes. This is a, a pint. I could drink a couple of these over the course of an evening easily oh, yeah. <laughs> without feeling fatigued like you would maybe with some wheat beers. Um, I think a two is very accurate, buddy. I'm going to agree with you on that one. Now for the finish. Awesome. It's got, you know, normally we say that the finish is where the magic happens. I don't know about you. I think this finish is a little muted. I'll let you give your opinion it, on that. It's it's Yeah, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because it, it really is. You know, after that complex taste... You would almost expect uh, that the finish would be as complex, or, or a slight, maybe slightly less, but there would be some complexity. There's not really much in, in what I'm tasting right here. Like it really cl- dissipates very, very quickly. Oh, and, super and that quick! Yeah, might be that might be also part of what you you just described, my friend. That extremely high drinkability that this beer has, because it it, it does taste extremely refreshing. Uh, I could easily have a couple of these, like, and uh, you know, just not even realize that I've had two glasses because it drinks so easily. I will say though, and I'll point out one thing that I really like about the finish: leaves a hint of that clove note, like that that classic yeah, Hefeweizen and clove note. And I like that because it, it's almost like a reminder of how the beer, their their main you know characteristics are, which is a, a signature in the Hefeweizen uh, style. Yeah. So. So I was thinking about going down to a two, but actually 2.5 because of that. Yeah, there's like a little hint of the clove, mm-hmm. a little hint of the banana, a little hint of that biscuitiness at the end. But yeah, it's gone Very just really, really quickly, subtle. which is a lot of the times a sign of a really well-crafted, well-brewed beer. Yes. There is mastery. I mean, every Hofbrau beer, there's a level of mastery to it. But this one, you can tell there's that mastery in the, in the crafting of this beer to make it so palatable, where you get hints of those flavors but they don't stick around they don't linger and overstay their welcome yeah i would like i would like more of a finish on it i would like everything yeah. again same as same as the taste on this one same as the aroma i would like a little bit more of everything so another one person would sip this beer and say i want more of what i'm getting another yeah. person would sip it and be like well there's no aftertaste on this this is amazing this is fantastic mm-hmm. how could you fault this so it's like how do you balance that and how do you score it I know you said you were thinking about going down to a 2, you landed on a 2.5. I think I'm going to go down to a 2 with it. So for the first time this review, we're going to disagree. Just for that reason, There's, it's so good, but there's just it's lacking character for a wheat beer especially. When I think of wheat beers, the finish is what really stands out to me normally. That's where I'm looking for a lot of the character. The, the mouthfeel and the finish for me on wheat beers are the big things. As an overall beer experience, my friend, from beginning to end, what would you rate it on three? I will say I quite like the the overall experience of this beer because it's something very unique. And while the carbonation, I think, for me is what's letting it down a little bit, yeah. I do think that I appreciate the extreme drinkability of it and in the sense that, yes, it, it's a little lacking uh, volume in a sense. Yeah. In terms of intensity, intensity is a better term. It, it kind of makes it up for the fact that it's extremely drinkable. And it also goes to show, like, I mean, we almost, at least I've almost drank it completely. I know you have a little bit more in yours, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's drinking very, very quickly and, and it's very, you know, pleasant. So for that reason, my friend, I think I'm going to go with 2.5 because I think it deserves it. It's extremely well done. Everything is into place. It's just like from a personal preference standpoint, there's a couple of things that are I would have preferred more. What do you think? Yeah, from beginning to end, I mean, it's a fantastic beer experience. It's There's something interesting on the aroma. There's something interesting on the taste. The mouthfeel, even though there isn't anything interesting, mm. that's interesting in itself because it's so different from a regular wheat beer in the sense that you feel like you're drinking a lager. So it becomes interesting. 
it's definitely unique, which for me, when grading a beer experience and overall beer experience, the uniqueness plays into that so much because how yeah. memorable is it going to be? How different is this from any beer that I've had before, right? That's good. That's what's going to make it stand out. That's a good, and that yes, beer experience from cracking way. the bottle, pouring it out, taking your first sip, taking your first sniff, then your first sip, like everything that plays into the beer experience, the uniqueness is a ma- massive part of that. I, I haven't quite had a wheat beer just like this one. So I'll match you on that score, buddy. 2.5. I agree. It's an overall beer experience for the half brow, half a bite. <laughs> So in our rating system, if you're curious to learn a little bit more than that, there is a link in the description you can click on to read a little bit more about how our scores break down. For myself, it came out to a four on five, which in our rating system falls into the excellent beer category. It just is. It's an excellent beer, man. And for you, a little bit higher. You know, you gave it that 2.5 instead of the two like I did. So that bumps mm-hmm. it up to a 4.16 on five, which is still in the excellent beer category. Well, there you go, man. I think, look, I've... So far, I've never seen the Maybach, and I've never seen any other Hofbrau beers around. So for, this might, for me as a Canadian, as a, as a lowly Canadian, <laughs> this might close out this Hofbrau series of reviews. We'll see, unless another one of their beers pop up sometime soon. But this has been a pleasure exploring the Hofbrau Brewery and all the brews that I can get up here along with you, my friend. Let us know down below, what do you think of the Hofbrau Hefeweizen? And if you've tried it, where does it rank? your list of Hefeweizens and whatever you do you see that little beer bell down below click that beer bell because it'll let you know YouTube will let you know when we're in the pub and having a beer if you want to join us again (laughs) it's important it's important you better know when you're in the pub to hang out exactly and no matter what don't forget to close your beer brackets